Newcastle do feel that their recent defensive frailties are more down to individual errors rather than a basic team weakness. So the only change from the Ferenc Farosh match is in midfield with David Ginola back for Keith Gillespie. And of course that does give, does give them the extra width on this left-hand side. We'll yet wait and see whether Rob Lee tucks in a bit, Batty tucks into the central area. And that might just allow Peter Beersley to get forward alongside Shearer, alongside Ferdinand. I think if that does happen, the one thing they have to be careful about is that Lee doesn't get ahead of the ball too early. Beersley as well, and Ginola as well. Because if that happens, then we know this Manchester United side are brilliant at counter-attacking. So they're going to have to be a little bit careful about that. We know what we'll get from the front two. Well, for Manchester United, it's Carol Paborski for Jordi Cruyff. Ryan Giggs still unfit, still no Roy Keane, but he was due to train in Manchester this morning, and he's definitely in line for the midweek Coca-Cola Cup tie against Swindon. Phil Neville is available again after ankle surgery, and he's amongst the substitutes. Well, along with Steve Bruce, he was man of the match in this fixture last year. I wonder how big a part he'll have to play today. I'm sure he'll have some work to do if Manchester United are going to win. But I think they'll defend deep, very similar to the way they did against Liverpool. The back four, I'm sure, will drop off not leave too much grass behind them because Shearer and Ferdinand need no encouragement to, to drive in behind defences. I think ahead of that, they'll tuck in Beckham, Jonsson and Buck in that kind of area. Nice and tight in the midfield, nice tight unit, a front line of defence. Paborski, we have him on the left here, but I think they'll say to him, if you get some joy, stay there. If you don't, then feel free to go and try the right-hand side. I don't think they'll commit him just one side or the other. Again, Cantona, no matter how quiet he was, as he was in this picture last year for 50 minutes, he popped up with a winning goal. Well, Manchester United's undefeated record in the Premiership, certainly on the line. But they've come back from Turkey in great heart. With the scalp of Liverpool still fresh on their belts, of course, as well. They're surely in splendid shape for another mighty match. But Newcastle, no. Even a draw will put them top of the table tonight. They do have some old scores to settle here. It's Newcastle United against Manchester United. And Manchester United defending the end that they survived in the first half last March, survived by the skin of their teeth, by the fingernails of Peter Schmeichel, who's been such a barrier to Newcastle's hopes in recent meetings, not just that game. Yeah, I think Kevin would be looking for the same sort of start on that night, Mark. Quick, fast, furious, push Manchester United back, and this time, perhaps we might get the break. But, Kowalski starting on the left, and for Solskjaer to chase, guided forward by his fellow countryman, Ronnie Jonsson. And Newcastle have, to use their own words, been uh, grinding out some results. Particularly in away games that have got them over the potential psychological difficulties of that walloping at Wembley in the Charity Shield. Now they made a bad start to the league campaign with a couple of defeats in the first three games. Cantona, oh, well, Cernicek after his adventure in Hungary off his line must have wondered whether that was all going to work out well for him. That one more difficult to deal with today. Amazing the way it skipped off the surface, it did do that. Phil marks him, though, he kept his eye on it that time. Batty. Pallister goes in, Batty's there again, Pallister's there again. Well, the players respond to atmosphere. This will be magnificent, because that's the feeling that the crowd are creating at the moment. Pallister. Isn't the best of passes to Butt, and here come Newcastle. That was a lot of sloppy from Gary Pallister. 
Beckham. Kicked away by Watson, that really could have gone any which way, but it fell well for Newcastle to bat it. But pressing the record, Ginola. heard Kevin Keegan say that Keith Gillespie was very unlucky to be uh, left out in preference for Ginola. Here's Ferdinand. Coming out of play. That's something to look for, Martin. We, we know the power of Ferdinand and Shearer in there. Now, me and Pallister, I think, will be... Yeah, they've got up against them. They'd be quite comfortable we could deal with it. But I'm not so sure both fullbacks would be that good in there and I just wonder at times we see that diagonal from right to left and left to right for Ferdinand to Shearer pulling on one of the fullbacks Ferdinand just teasing it in for Rob Lee it's behind Shearer and his old club colleague at Blackburn David May straight to the way and Schmeichel really had to reach up for that one great take nothing's easy today for goalkeepers Newcastle, as you'd expect, looking for a fast tempo and trying to shape the game their way. Trying to do something that is not managed before since the start of the Premier League, and that is to beat Manchester United. This is encouraging for Newcastle in respect that Ginola at least is looking, if he's just going to get half a yard, he's going to look to deliver it. Pawlowski with an international colleague to try and beat in the Newcastle goal the two from the Czech Republic so the Czech has regained his international place since Euro 96 he was worried today about whether he was going to keep his club place there he is unchallenged he was of course Dropped after the charity shield, but got back pretty quickly. Johnson. Ginola. Referee's going to have to make some allowances for the conditions here, but I don't think wet or dry. Yeah, I think a quick word with Nicky Butt. I think he'd have let it go, but it's, it's Nicky Butt's third or fourth free kick that he's given away in the opening five minutes of the match. And I think that's why I just had a little mention. I mean, we saw that compared to Spirit so much in evidence last week from Nicky Butt at Old Trafford against Liverpool. Beersley to bat it with a short free kick. Beersley again. Newcastle have got four in the middle. Manchester United have got Cantona helping out at the back. Johnson. Blocks from Batty, Kowalski really running into some traffic. That's another free kick to Newcastle. Awarded by the referee from Bristol, Steve Dunn. Shearer, who explores this part of the pitch so cleverly. Reigns was given a free kick. Referee was happy to give a corner, I think. Reigns' flag was up very quickly. He doesn't cheer or use defenders so well. I mean, he backs into them, and he used it. And he just turned Dennis over, and you see a little nudge there. Here's the takes. And there's a spectacular attempt from Ginola. Good effort. Difficult skill. And Beersley thinking, he doesn't just toss this in aimlessly. He spots Ginola at the edge of the box. French is good enough to make contact and hit the target from there, but just get underneath it slightly. Well, Kevin Keegan has been trumpeting the Newcastle attitude today, as you'd expect. You always want to measure yourself against the best, he says. Our aim is to become the very best. Beresford. Picking out Shearer. The two makes the runs to the left between Shearer and Ferdinand that possibly needed the sorting out early on in their pairing up front. And both for Love going down right of centre. Oh, 
Really just a bit slow to uh, pick himself up, but he's uh, back on his feet now. And Sonicek is off on another gallop out of the penalty area, and he's done the job very effectively. And Shearer is by some distance offside. Held the line really well. David Main company is calling to the bench for some sort of strapping, I think, Alan Shearer. After that earlier knock. Lee. Another time he's having. A man who as a boy dreamt about wearing the Newcastle number nine shirt. It's taken a while to come his way. It's cost Newcastle a lot of money to get him here. But already the rewards are developing for the club and a winning goal today. Would, even at this early stage, really say so much about the investment. And in he goes here. Now helping out again. Pallister, a lot of red shirts around where the ball was dropping. And only Willow Gunnar Solskjaer to chase up front. Beresford. Jimmy Lapp. on the back heel, a measure of his current confidence. Pallister. Poborski. Johnson. Haven't seen too much from Manchester United in attack as yet. Cantona. Sosha sliding in. Beckham was able to get to it. Ronnie Johnson arriving. Not quite quickly enough. Paborski. Neville. Well, 100 to 1 odds. <laughs> <laughs> that nearly came up if anyone had been brave enough to take it. Well, we haven't seen much of him. You're right, he's an attacking force, but this was just a little warning. Just before this, Beckham had played a lovely little ball into the area. Just short in number. But I think that there shows that they're not going to be shy in getting forward. Gary Neville quite prepared to get up around the edge of the box when they've got possession. Beresford. He's bounced away off Ferdinand for David May to collect and Terrell with a bit of time and now the flag's up against Solskjaer. Paul Jocelyn, like all of us enjoying the occasion. Batting. Come off with Shearer. Paborski. Johnson. Newcastle holding the line. Andy, where do you just stand on this Newcastle debate? Individual mistakes, or are they still uh, tactically not balanced properly defensively? No, I think there's work to be done. I mean, I don't think they're bad defenders. I think the, the school of thought says they can't defend the wrong one. I think there have been an awful lot of individual errors, and as a manager, that's one thing that you, you really can't do much about yourself. It's an individual error from Nicky Butler for Manchester United, presenting Jimela in particular with possession, and Newcastle may be with an advantage here. But I do think, sorry, Matt, I do think when they get into games like this in the past, I think that's where they've been found out. I think there are some times you have to go into games and you have to prepare for them, especially like, like Alex did last week against Liverpool. That was a different sort of Manchester United we saw at Old Trafford. Sometimes you have to do that. Beckham. Here's Peacock. Well, there was a time when uh, it was often said about Manchester United that they could only play a certain way, but Alex Ferguson has developed the uh, tactical flexibility within his talented squad. We might see uh, signs of that again in this match. 
as they're under pressure here from the uh, powerful running of Ginola, the shot from Ferdinand, and a deflection that would have left Schmeichel flat-footed, but it's gone wide. Well, he didn't lose Peter Schmeichel. It's a great block from Dennis Sermon in the end. Ginola did everything right. Really good block, the keeper's beaten. You don't often see Peter Schmeichel just stand there. Matt Shearer going up well, Peacock! The goal is given, and Manchester United are very angry about it. I'd like to see that one again. I thought Irwin got there, Mark, I have to be honest. The Lions has got the best view in the ground, no doubt about that. So you can see that Schmeichel has come across to lead the debate. We'll get a look at it from here. Shearer wins the first set, a peak at the second as it drops. Well, I don't think that's over. I think it's impossible for the linesman to give 100% from where he's standing. With Dennis on his left foot where it is, but that's over the line. It's an awful harsh decision. It's a big decision, a game like this. And very, very mixed emotions there. Kevin Keegan saw the signal. And Alex Ferguson has to take it on the chin. Peacock knocked it goalwards. Albert was in front of him trying to get out of the way. It's funny, I was thinking just before that, Mark, about the options they have at Corners Newcastle. With Peacock and Albert joining Ferdinand and Shearer. They really have four good options to aim at. And I think Alex Ferguson was more concerned with the fact that two free headers basically were allowed to well develop in the middle of the six-yard box. Certainly Peacock standing totally free. But it's a big decision. Certainly live in the game now. But Cantona comes uh, Manchester United's way with Jonsson. Paborski. Cantona blocked by Beresford. And it's a goal kick. So when do you think, Andy, that these two great Uniteds have met three times in the last ten months and Newcastle, who score goals for fun against anyone else, haven't scored in any of those three games? Well, they needed a break, and you feel that they've got one here. The reason this is a difficult call, I feel, for the Lionsman, Martin, is you watch Dennis Irwin's left foot, I think that totally matched anything. That's, that's a tough call for him to say. That ball is completely crossed the line. It's a really, really tough call. I mean, even you and I looking at that now, it's hard to call that 100%. And I think that you have to be 100% to make those sort of decisions. Shearer. Sure. That was uh, Ginola, who's popping up in all sorts of positions away from the left-hand side, which is his base at times, although Beardsley's outside him at the moment. Now Beardsley just beckoning him back. Well, maybe Kevin will feel that's evening up a bit after the 45 minutes here in March when he did everything. Didn't enjoy the best of luck, but Peter Schmeichel certainly was in fine form. We might be saying, uh, well, that's, we've deserved that. Well, much is uh, being suggested about television's part in adjudicating in matters of fact on a decision such as the one we've just seen. That was not just a tough call for the linesman, it was for the cameraman as well. For the neutrals, it's brilliant. You get a big game at this, the one thing you want is a goal in the opening 20 minutes. Paborski. That was over for Manchester United here. You see, that's what I don't think David Ginola can just stand and let Gary Neville go forward like that. And here's the other side of that, of yeah. course, he, uh, in a way that sometimes throws called cheating by not uh, accepting your defensive responsibilities. Maybe he's got the licence from his coaches to do that, but he uh, gets the ball and Gary Neville's uh, 40, 50 yards away from the play. Well, it's a major, major incident in a major, major match. Peter Schmeichel continued his complaints to the extent that he got the yellow card. <laughs> so 
Solskjaer as the crowd was bellowing for handball. Off the chest of Jonsson. Ginola mixing up their play nicely at times. Newcastle, Ferdinand, who was looking along the line, and oh well, <laughs> it's Mike Ryan, the man on this near touchline, who's uh, the centre of attention again, as he was on the goal. Beckham. Oh, by Beardsley on back, free kick to Manchester United. Cantona not placing the ball correctly. He was thinking about a, a quick shot. Well, they just need to go with Gary Neville, who's got about 20, 30 yards on that right side. If they want somebody just to control it and deliver it into the box from a pretty good angle. And old Beckham or Cantona might well find this out. Looking, assessing, changing his approach, but definitely taking. And well, it always appeared to be going too high. Well, I don't know. You, I often said about goalkeepers, the reactions tell us, tell a story. You watch the goalkeeper; he's worried. Suddenly, check scrambling across, crashing at the side net. I don't expect Manchester United to be too worried. It's not the first time this season, early on, that they've gone down. In a, in a football match. Not worried, but aggrieved. Becker. Tackling going on in the wet, although uh, Ginola has felt the force of what Steve Dunn with his hands behind his back, supervising it all. He started quite poorly with Danny Ginola as well. Pleased to be back. And left hand of the last two. Uh, nothing like I've got a competition to meet me. <laughs> Try that a little bit harder. Keith Gillespie has had uh, a spot of neck trouble. He's had a 24-hour bug as well, but certainly fit enough to be uh, chosen amongst the substitutes against his old club. Bit of a buffeting on Shearer. And as a message from the referee. Solskjaer. That's unlucky. A better take from Johnson from the little flick. We're giving Albert a problem or two. Trying to get in behind Albert had the ball got there. It's now with Cantona. Kaborski coming in from the left. Into his good right foot. Trying to find the angle for the shot. Newcastle determined not to allow him a clear sight of Sandy Check's goal. What a pass that was from Beckett to Cantona. Because it dropped at Beckham. He didn't have physic beautifully straight back to him. So Kowalski will take the corner. A bit of push and shove going on there with Shearer and Cantona. Beckham, his sort of territory. Oh, well done, Albert. The defender, you've got to, someone's got to put pressure on at the edge of the box. 
Sometimes everyone stands and waits for people. But Philippe Albert didn't hang about. As Beckham brought it down, he's first to arrive, throw himself in front of it. Well, we've had a look at that goal. We can look at it more closely now and see if we're any nearer. Again, you see the two. Shearer does ever so well there. Beacock's head is half blocked. And as it's rolling, it's rolling. Oh, dear. It looks over, doesn't it? It does there. Good spot, <laughs> Here comes Lee. Ginola. In from batting. Kowalski, only one man to try and find up from Canton now, saying don't uh, play that percentage ball unless you have to. Uh, numbers in midfield closer. Ginola. Yeah, nothing wrong with that, if you win the ball. Perfectly entitled to take him down, take him through there. As long as you're taking the ball and the referee thinks it's fair. It's risky. This time it's uh, Neville appealing that he was being fouled as he went for the ball again. But, uh, head height that time. Peter. Watson. trying to uh, get in behind Pallister. He's taking his firmly on the ball. But a goal for Darren Peacock. So uh, Newcastle at least overcome one recent hoodoo. They've scored against Manchester United. Just, you might say. Well, Bear certainly had a good view of the proceedings. Not so clear, I'm sure, from having Keegan's vantage point, but he was delighted to accept the outcome. Kowalski. Aaron's cross, and Manchester United. Well, they'll need to get more players forward now. This is what the rest of Manchester United at the back mark. They've got two against two. Sheer and Ferdinand with Pallister and May. That's risky with those two. You put an awful lot of faith in your two centre backs. Solskjaer's onside, played on by Steve Watson. Oh. behind Darren Peacock and it's Poborski who's popped up in the centre and uh, well one player from the Czech Republic in contact with another and Poborski doesn't get the penalty that he believes he deserves I thought he went looking for that a bit too much myself there's no doubt he got to the ball and played it past the goalkeeper but he made rather a lot of it I think that might have influenced the referee Kowalski's cross is also unproductive. Let's have another look at it. The penalty incident, that is. Well, it's the conditions again. Spins away, they get a little bit of confusion. Your goalkeeper goes to the ground. You see the left, but look what he makes of it. I think that might well have influenced the referee. Well, he thought it was. It's going Newcastle's way so far. I think we've seen two decisions already in the opening 26 minutes. It could have gone either way. Beresford. So, uh, and trapped offside again. Well, Alex Ferguson and Kevin Keegan spent much of last season trying to hoodwink each other through their teams on the pitch. But at times also their own comments off it. 
occasionally he felt it was in danger of becoming personal, but mostly it was the natural consequences of vigorously pursuing the same prize. Kowalski. Peacock doing well again. Well, he had a chance for Borski to feed it any earlier. I thought he gave Peacock a chance by taking a touch on the ball and running it towards him. Solskjaer. Lovely helping out Watson. Ginola immediately goes for this darting off. It wasn't a good pass. Johnson. Cleared off well by Shearer to Ginola. Attacking David May. And there, Ferdinand and Shearer seem to be uh, trying to make the same sort of run. Neither of them able to be picked out by the Frenchman. Paborski. Well picked out by Beckett. Jonsson. Neville. Never a formality with a greasy ball. But Manchester United weren't moving in to try in any way to distract Pavel Cernicek. I think they were all disappointed and couldn't get an able with the cross. They worked the position really well from one side to the other. And got him again in acres of space. Batty. Shearer. Now Lee. Shearer goes near post. Ferdinand behind him. Alistair with a little bit of juggling and then the clearance that was sufficient. And given back to Newcastle by Beckham to Beresford. Shearer just complaining about the type of service then. Ah, it's been a good half hour, full of incident. who's been prominent in it and that is very prominent indeed it's a classic goal from David Ginola it's 2-0 to Newcastle what a magnificent strike sheer quality, sheer class the way it's played into him I think Gary Neal was a little bit on the wrong side in fact he is he's a bit outside Ginola you can see the way he was just holding his he could feel it he immediately turned inside. He didn't look at the goal, he doesn't need to, he don't move. He sets it off at this side. It's past Peter Schmeichel. It's Arky into the top corner. It's a wonderful goal. And there's absolutely no doubt this time. And there's the manager who brought him back into the team today. Ginola's first goal since he got one in the 4-3 at Anfield. Absolutely no doubt about that goal. He's been involved well, though, hasn't it, in the opening half hour? He's looked hungry. He's looked like he's been out for a couple of weeks. And uh, the majority of his goals in English football, maybe all of them, in fact, have come with his right foot. Oh, he does give you a problem because he's good on either side, Matt, but I just couldn't help thinking that they're booking for David May here. I just can't help thinking that Gary Neville made his mind up by being on his outside rather than the inside, maybe saying, go wide. If you're going to go somewhere, go wide. Less danger, but he made his mind up, I think, with being too, too tight and too much on the wrong side that Ginola was stuck coming inside and letting go. The booking for May, the free kick for Beresford. Alba challenging. But I know they want the win, Martin, desperately after what happened in the charity shield. I just wonder if we get 
touch now of maybe reversing that score. There you go, you look at much space Gary Neville's giving him up, and from there, that is absolute class. Take a bow, son. Wonderful. Yes, just to remind you again, it's exactly the same Newcastle side that played in the Charity Shield, that started the Charity Shield, and they haven't played together as an 11 since then until today. Very different story to tell to this point. And they're uh, doing their best to raise the roofs of the stands here with the noise. That means so much to all connected with Newcastle United. Manchester United, who have already this season picked themselves up from the positions when they've been behind. But their unbeaten Premiership record, the last in this season's league, is very, very much under threat now. And we haven't yet seen too much from Shearer and Ferdinand. That's Beardsley. And that's not as Manchester United would want it, Schmeichel looking beseechingly at his defenders and Alex Ferguson looking very anxious at his team. Well, they're making mistakes. Gary Pass are very uncharacteristic, playing uh, not great balls in the areas where they've just been cut out at the moment. but you can just hear what he would say to any comments about that. Correct. Doesn't matter who scores the goals as long as we win the game. His Majesty is matched by his modesty. Ferdinand with one effort that was, of course, a threatening one. Dennis Irwin just getting a piece of it. That whistle behind for a corner. It's funny, though, at 2-0 up, Mark. It's here that I think Newcastle proves to teams that are proved to see so-called the doubters that Kevin calls them, that they can go on and win the match. I think 2-0 up for Manchester United, pretty much everybody would be saying match over. I think 2-0 up for Newcastle, when we look at the recent game against Aston Villa, when there were two goals up at half-time, suggests maybe not match over. And we can imagine from their own sake, how if they were to let this slip now at 2-0 up, having done so much in the opening half hour, what that might do to them. But on the other hand, if they can hold out and even increase it and go and win the match, well, what a boost it would be to them. Yes, she did a good job at uh, playing devil's advocate there. <laughs> they are in the driving seat. Here's Watson. Two goals of very uh, differing natures. One that just got over the line, and one that almost uh, ripped a hole in the net. In between the Pogorski penalty appeal. Pallister. is May. Remember, Manchester United have only lost one league game since New Year's Day. That New Year's Day game was at Tottenham when they conceded four. I think if it stays with us, I just wonder if Alex Ferguson, even this early, be thinking of changing it. By that, I mean, I just think that there might be a case at half-time for saying to Ronnie Johnson, well, we're two down, we need a goal. You know, we'll pull Beckham inside beside Buck. Maybe bring on Cruyff and play for Bosque and Cruyff wide. I think those sort of thoughts are bringing through Alex Ferguson's mind even now, this early in the match. Newcastle, so spurred by scoring twice. First to everything at the moment, Lee. Oh. 
And uh, Schmeichel in too much of a hurry to get his team going again. Lee. Shearer. Oh, it's hit the post! And it flew back into play. He's had an attempt now. I tell you what, from an admiring journalist, that one was even better, I think. It was certainly struck with far more power. Schmeichel saw it. It was on his side, but he couldn't get near it. I mean, this is hit with such pace and ferocity. What a strike. Probably frustration here. 37 minutes, he's thinking, I haven't had a shot at goal. Well, he has now, you're right. And what an effort. And Schmeichel, who was in the firing line in the first half in March, he survived. He hasn't survived. A revenge mission for Newcastle United. Beardsley. Trying to find a moment to tell you what's coming up next week on Sky Sports, but the uh, cut and thrust preventing that. Yeah, yeah. Check your listings. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it's Coca Cola Cup football. North and south of the border, two of Alec Ferguson's former clubs when he was a player, Dunfermline and Rangers, that's the semi-final. On Tuesday we start at seven on the Sky Sports 1. It's Sky Sports 3 on Wednesday. Leeds United against Aston Villa, the Coca-Cola Cup tie with a real ring of last season about it. even when there is a potential for individual errors, team confusion there. It's a breaking Newcastle's way. Peter Beersley's done well in many respects just for his discipline. First half, he's held that central midfield role. Hardly got forward at all. He's always been like there and, there and available. Always look at the prompt. And always prepared to apologise when a pass is misplaced and prepared to chase and try and win the ball back, but it's Beckham for Manchester United. Well, they've been very dented in this first half, but whether they've been damaged as far as this match is concerned beyond repair, we shall see. Kowalski. But showing that he's uh, still feeling very positive. Still, but Senechek has come. Now there, uh, just uh, passes it out into space. And uh, Ginola is really looking like the player that he was when he first came to Newcastle. It's been a while, I think, they feel in these parts since he's put on the sort of performance we've seen from him in the 40 minutes when he's been back in the team today. David Batty will feel a little bit relieved that last attack. Really casual in the middle, just outside his own, his own box. Wanted too much time. Ricky Buck wasn't giving him that. And Peacock was uh, raising uh, an arm for an offside that was never going to be given. Okay. Not a sign of lack of order then. Not again, defending with depth. But as in that earlier incident a few minutes ago, if he does that and he gets the ball, it's fine. You make decisions, yeah. Oh, right. But that was a good contest there. With Batty, I'm not so sure about the second one, but wasn't so sure about it. And it's all going on between the two now. Well, I think it all depends on what the referee actually saw. They certainly didn't go at each other. I think Nicky Buck took exception to Batty's challenge. Yeah. It would be a pity for the game if it was anything other than yellow cards each. It's yellow for Batty. 
but he certainly felt agreed he gets yellow as well. Uh, you can see Nicky Butts in the ground and Batty comes in. Forceful wins the ball. There's a tangle of legs. They're all looking to have a little niggle at each other. He's got a little out of hand. Yes, well, I think Butt felt that Batty wasn't with that leading foot looking totally for the ball. But that's uh, how those two really earn their livings going in for tackles and serving their side in the footballing engine room. Yeah, you're not going to get one of those two coming out. But it, I think, shows the undercurrent of tension that this fixture brings. Certainly Kevin Keegan would just like the 90 minutes to continue. To play it in one hit. What would happen if Manchester United could uh, grab a goal before half time? Can't do it like that. when Manchester United have had the ball. And we talked uh, early in the half, Andy, about Ginola being uh, allowed to stray and not being expected to defend too much. It's been profitable for Newcastle, and Manchester United haven't taken advantage of that space on the right. Any devastating effect as yet. I think the ones yet, I think we have. Mm. I just don't think we can give them as much space as they get. Right. It's not clear penalty. Beckham able to cross it in without a challenge. Probably <laughs> keeping his arms firmly down by his side then. And that would be the only thing I think Kevin would be worried about. The good amount of space that Gary Neville's had. Nancy so sharp. And the back here, remember one of those came off in the Fenerbahce on Wednesday, he was involved in both the Manchester United goals. It's a free kick earned by Sosa. Maybe a little concern for Kevin Keegan here. Some smiles will be wiped off Newcastle faces. Manchester United can uh, maximise this situation in stoppage time at the end of the first half. Beckham, Sernicek, the goalkeeper, who's had to live with a week of uh, some criticism, but he's got through with his goal still intact. Darren Peacock will be credited with the opening goal for Newcastle. A decision of fine margins, but it seems in the end a fine decision by the officials. And look at this from our reverse angle, a beautiful view of a beautiful goal from David Ginola. Newcastle United 2, Manchester United 0.
I'm John McCurry and I'm Chief Executive of the uh, Newcastle West End Food Bank. Essentially over the course of the month we would issue food parcels to about 800 people on average every month and those parcels are issued to people who can't really afford food. We get people coming for all sorts of uh, strange and wonderful reasons and we just try and support them at their time of need. I don't forget when I start, you know, in, in for this for me it's really important to come here for for talk with some people because you have some people don't have a lot of money for come uh, every week in a stadium but they love football but they cannot come always and this for me it's important and what I see today it's amazing you have a lot of people take a really long time for for do some eat and this it's really really good. We have uh, Alan along today. Um, and that's great in some ways because it really promotes and it's great to see the footballers having a big interest in what's happening in, in their community. But the other thing that it does, like the match day collections, is raises the profile of poverty and food hunger in the city for many families. For me, when you have the money, if you can help, like, do what you want, like, it's in a time, give a time or give a money, do what you feel, you know, if you want to do some things. You have to do it if you want it, and this is really important. For this, I'm happy to be in this club because they, they do a great things. Our colleagues and fans from uh, the Newcastle Fans Food Bank got together and set up what they called essentially NUFC Fans Food Bank. So that on match days, we go along to St James's Park on Strawberry Place, uh, park up our van and just get out the collection buckets and uh, really collect food and cash donations from the public. Uh, I got to say the generosity is overwhelming. Um, their support actually keeps us going throughout the course of uh, the year. Without it we'd be lost and um, really it helps us meet the demand coming in from, from people. So the resources you see today, the only reason we can deliver them is because of the support of the club. To get the issue uh, promoted into the public eye really creates more of awareness and when things like this happen we can see a rise in food donations and that's only all to the good for us because it then helps us meet the demand. So that friendly circle and relationship with the club, with the uh, fans food bank and with the fans making those donations is essential to our survival really and meeting the needs of people who can't afford food. Well, Steve, uh, case very much of back to your, your roots this evening. Well, that's the great part of the job, that I can give something back to the community a little bit. You know, it's quite surreal that I find myself standing here where, where I was born and bred a, a mile away. And uh, when I was kids, we, we came here. You know, the Lightfoot Stadium was quite unique in them days. It had a big track around it as well, athletics track. And, yeah, just up the road. And uh, even my wife reminded me that she was a better runner than me, which wouldn't have been hard at the time, I have to tell you. And she ran for the city and ran for Newcastle and, and she came down here twice a week too. So it's quite something that I can come down and see it, that it's still here and uh, I'm great for the community. I mean, today we're at, you know, with the foundation, with the work for, you know, the not so privileged uh, young kids and kids who've got an awful illness, but the once a week that they get here, you can see where the joy of them is, uh, is something special for them. So this is um, the rebrand of the Premier League Kicks program, um, and now our disability youth football fits within that program. You know, good 11-year track record of providing positive activities for young people to come and just play, learn, get some qualifications, but mostly play. Um, and this really secures our disability youth football for the future, so there'll always be a safe, quality place for young players with any disability to come and have safe and quality coaching. We're quite unique, you know, the, the love for football is still there from when I was a kid and you ask all of them, I've just asked one of them who we should play on Saturday and he's come up with a whole team practically, you know, he's eight, you know, it's a, uh, uh, it, listen, we come here, it's a tough working class city and it's pr proud of its club and uh, for me as a Geordie, as I've said many times, you know, it's, uh, 
it's an unbelievable feeling and if I can give something back these are the these are the nights which is the good part of the job you know to to give something back to to the community if I can this is the stuff that people won't realize that the football club does through the foundation that uh, we will go and secure the funding where you know the local FA or the national FA don't so that there's a pathway from five to 55 for if you have a disability to come and play free football and that's really the, the strength of, of our foundation that will react to local community need and put on sustainable long-term football provision. Um, so we're really proud of it. The Kicks program helps us secure it, but it's uh, just another version of what the foundation does in the community. Listen, I was like any other kid, you know, when I was Newcastle and mad, and I can recite you many games from 71, 72, 73, 74 when I was a kid, just like that eight year old now has just done to me, you know. So, you know, it, it, nothing changes here, you know. If you're, if you're male, female, uh, you, support, you support the tune, and it can only be a good thing. We are a, a foundation that wants to be representative of the community, you know, from Berwick to North Tyneside to County Durham. We want, and we want a workforce that's representative of the community. Now, this is the first time I had a first team manager who's representative of the community that we're serving, half a mile down the road. So he was, you know, he's over the moon and delighted to be here. And that comes across. If you talk to some of the young people, you know, they're so in awe of the fact that he's, he's come, but he just generally wants to be here. He's trying to make a difference in the community. The foundation is accessible for everybody and to help those nuts of privilege as ourselves. So if we can give something back a little bit, then it can only help. Newcastle heading towards the top of the English Premier. But there's still 45 minutes for Manchester United, whether fueled by their own ability or by apparent senses of injustice. Although I have to tell you, Andy Gray believes the referee was absolutely right on the penalty incident. Yeah, I had the same opinion of him. I thought he made a bit more of it, and he did go into the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper take him out. But isn't that what's good about football? It's all about opinions. And at the moment here it's all about Newcastle 2, Manchester United 0, Pallister. Poborski. Seriously looking back in. Let's get a word from Nick Collins. Martin, all the players, needless to say, really wanted to know about the goal. Peter Schmeichel was the first to inquire whether it was over or not. In fact, uh, just about the only player who didn't ask was Darren Peacock. Kevin Keegan summed it up. He said, try and take it away from us now. Absolutely. But he's reached it. I think he's been brilliant for Manchester United, Mark Nicky Bott, first half. I think he's been an exceptional player. I think he really has kept him going. And it's just typical as well. Early in the match, trying to get back in in a game. Good, forceful run. Poborski will take the corner. And so sharp who's been finding goals easy to come by in home games. He's now needing to produce that touch if Manchester United can do anything here at St James's Park. We wondered at half-time whether Alex Ferguson might change it to get uh, David Beckham into a more central role. It hasn't happened as yet, when the Janssen holding midfield player is still out there. Beckham is sacrificing his own personal preferences to do what he's told to keep the shape for the side at the moment as the manager still wants it. I'd be I would be surprised if we reach the error mark, the scoreline at 2-0, Alex Ferguson doesn't make a change then. There's a lot of slipping and sliding going on and it's a very wet afternoon up on Tyneside. But Hopefully a match to bring you, unlike the problems on Merseyside today. And the pitch is too wet for the Merseyside derby. Shearer, Shinola. Uh, Michael 
goes out again because <laughs> it's not the throw that Newcastle were expecting. It's an offside decision. And here's Gary Pallister. Pallister again. Newcastle continuing to try and press and maintain their work rate. Stop Manchester United really moving into a period in the match when they might be uh, in control in midfield. It hardly ever happened in the first half. Johnson. Good play from team pressure forced the mistake. Oh, that's better. Well organised, good organisation, good play. Making it really difficult for Manchester United. Cantona did well to find Becker. Well, Sonicek saved from Poborski. Cantona! And the goalkeeper's finally got it, and uh, more evidence to feel that this day is going to go Newcastle's way. Uh, Sundercheck and then either Watson or Peacock who really got back on the line and really one important decision that is for the defender. Cantona must have felt sure he'd got his side back in the game. A great ball from Beckham. Neville going ahead of the ball which went to the feet of Butt. Manchester United fans will feel this is more like their team. Well, watch this ball, it's a great ball, they've got three against two. Poborski heads down and then Cantona thinks, well, I'll just drill that into the far side and Watson's back in the line. Left foot, an important stop. Poborski's caught. Cool. Johnson. And that's uh, Steve Watson again getting the applause. Certainly looked for a second as though Cantona was going to find the same corner of the net as he did here in March. Kaborski, Gary Neville, Cantona. Kaborski's had to check his run to stay onside. Neville made a good uh, move into the central striking position. Certainly prepared to take the risk or two that they need to. And him to defence, which isn't known as being the most solid around, especially for a, a top side. Yeah, they do take a chance, and they will take a chance with Gary Neville and Dennis Irwin, but they still won't overcome it, Martin. They'll never throw too many men forward. Even with Neville that far forward, they still have three against two at the back. Charity Shield, Newcastle 13 games, they've conceded 19 goals already this season, the four today. So they won't feel uh, it's totally full of belief in their ability to shut Manchester United out, particularly uh, Ferguson's team just starting to play with more assertion. Too much here from Sushar. It was a little unlucky. <laughs> but I just wonder if even Kevin Keegan is thinking, oh, all right, David General has done his job in many respects. Wonderful second goal, 2-0 up. But look at the space they're getting down this near side. Would there even be a thought these men are, are bringing in a more solid midfield player? You look at what he's got available. And the be like, oh, a clap. And maybe stringing four across that midfield. Well, it's not in uh, Kevin Keegan's nature to make a defensive change. No, that's true, it isn't. Free kick to Newcastle. It's 
successful that Ferdinand's pulled away to jump against Irwin. He'd expect to if the ball was a little bit better. So he well in the air against the uh, smaller defender. Paul Dunn's assistant on the far side has indicated the ball was out. on Beersley by Johnson. Nobody Christ. Not the chance of bottoms off. Looking as though he might be the first called upon. For Manchester United. Batting. Beardsley. Ferdinand. Second half. Solskjaer pulls on Newcastle to handball. And now the crowd turn their wrath on Cantona, whom they feel has overreacted. Well, it's not a lingering problem, Andy. No, well, David Back is certainly was having a good laugh about it. Game will restart, not with a free kick to Manchester United, but a throw. <laughs> no, it's going to be cry for Solskjaer. But they want to make the change before the corner. And that's going to happen now. So the young Norwegian is probably uh, ahead of expectations in his development since coming to Old Trafford. His way to the Dutchman. Kowalski's corner. Not deep enough for Pallister. There's a good sprint between the England colleagues, Ferdinand and Beckham. Totally committed to getting to the ball first. Watson's throw. Just, uh, finding you just can't shrug Shearer off it that easily. Zinala isolated for a moment, but he's uh, doing the work well himself until finally, but there's an opponent that. Bobby Ginola couldn't get past. Beckham. Price and Cantona were both running away from the ball for one over the top. But they were too premature. The flag is up. Yeah, he just started his run a little early, Cruyff. Oh, those near ones again, though. Mm -hmm. I think there's far more discipline about this second half performance from the home side. And I, say, well, I was going to say not before time in games like this, but in saying that, I think it had, they had to be. I think Beers went back to the important second half, that central area. Robert Lee's he's sacrificed basically going forward at the moment. So he'll be back in that midfield area as well, making it really difficult. Well, they're certainly keeping three in there the yeah. majority of the time. Junal is the one who's got a bit of licence to go on, and it's a bit hard to give them the discipline to defend. There are the three. Batty, Beardsley, Lee, furthest from the camera. That's where the uh, defending operation of this marvellous 2-0 scenario for them is really beginning. Here is Lee. Lee. 
fair enough. And straight back to him by Pallister. Batter. Nicely gone on into the penalty area, has made his way back. Again, in that sort of defensive position. Ginola. Well, he thought he got a free kick and he picked the ball up. And he's been penalised, and now Pallister, who's not normally the sort to lose his rag. Went in to try and say it's our free kick, we want to get on with the game. Well, that's where the problem arose, because when David Ginola think, oh, I actually thought this might have been a free kick to Newcastle. The next three gave it the other way when Ginola picked the ball off the floor. And Pallister got annoyed when he didn't give him the ball back. Propelling Albert off the pitch. But once again, it's a linesman whose flag goes up early, Martin, and then the referee blew. You just go out a shot there. There's no doubt some sort of contact was made. But the officials have to decide whether it was deliberate or not. Obviously, they say it was deliberate. And the Cantonar stare, no more, directed. At Mike Ryan, who's had a very, very uh, busy afternoon. What do you make of that? Yeah, there was certainly contact there. It was more a gesture than anything, I feel. So, what is that? Four yellow cards now for Manchester United. Michael, May and Butt showing the card in the first half. And with David Batty for Newcastle. Half an hour to go. Beresford. Ginola. And oh, they've mounted away from Peter Bisley of Manchester United. Here's his pass, oh, as the ball dropped then for the flying 39, he really thought it was going to be 3-0. Well, I'm not saying he should score, but Les will know he should hit the target. He's got a great position, absolute great position for the striker. And even though the goalkeeper's flying at him, the ball is so good from Peter Beersley. That's just begging to be put in the net. He's certainly begging to hit the target. And if he hits the target, then he scores. You're getting great ball, as you have seen there. Both in great ball. It was a great ball from Beersley. And that would have put the game, I feel, beyond Manchester United. It was what, 14 years ago that Peter Beersley joined Manchester United for a brief spell, about six months, just one appearance in a League Cup tie in the senior team. It's been said so often there were plenty of uh, established players around and to bar his progress. He's uh, rationed himself as an attacking force from midfield. Been playing the position, holding the shape, and, but he got the ball then with extra room, and he made full use of it. It was a terrifically clipped pass, a great precision. Batting, dispossessing Cantona. And trip again for Newcastle. Gets it back from Lee. Finds Ferdinand. Here's Shearer. Not the favourite of the Manchester United fans. Ferdinand off the bar and in! It is 3 0 now. And that's the most difficult header. And that is Shearer. Look at Shearer. That is game setting match. He's over there, Manchester United fans. They were giving him steps when he had the ball. Quality. And that 
a goalkeeper, absolutely no chance. Back across from where it came from, underside of the bar, and this time Kerry can celebrate. This time Les doesn't let him down. In the 18th minute of the second half, Ferdinand's 10th goal of the season. And who needs midfield players getting forward uh, into the box when you've got Shearer and Ferdinand doing it and working it together? Well, that's, that's a little thought I've had as well. What's the time, Mark? If you've got two people who can win your games, like Shearer and Ferdinand, you don't have to overcommit from midfield. You can be a little bit cautious. And I think the second half today is, is a perfect example of that. With Beardsley, who we normally would play in the hole or would be getting forward into the box, has been so disciplined alongside Batty they've basically had two holding midfield players and Robert Lee to be fair hardly gone forward at all well that charity shield uh, drubbing and the extent of it and this of course is much more meaningful than the match at Wembley and they're one away from uh, coming up with the perfect reply. Ginola has scored. Peacock in that uh, crucial early incident. Given the goal, and Ferdinand flying into the middle again, hoping that Lee might provide some sort of supply. Today, you feel now, don't need too much more, except they're being driven on by uh, the indignation that they felt in previous matches against Manchester United, the fact that they've not done themselves justice, at times they've been unlucky, well they've had key things go their way, what about the, uh, the third goal, on another day it might have hit the underside of the bar and stayed out, here's Beckham, Ah, oh, that place is really jumping, they're really singing in the rain, aren't they? But maybe not now, because it's a Cantona. Wouldn't come quick enough for him, well played for Newcastle by Peacock. That's good defending. Never got worried and anxious when Cantona was round the back of him, kept his eye on the ball. Ferdinand shows just caught. You know, uh, Alan Shearer must be to the forefront in the voting for European Footballer of the Year. And that happens uh, at the end of 1996. There'll be some changes here for Manchester United. The players on, Scholes is off. Scholes is off, rather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a, there's a few coming on. No. <laughs> Ronnie Johnson and Poborski have gone off. waited a long time for this kind of situation against this particular opponent. And I think it, it might mentally even prove to Newcastle that you can win games, Martin, and win games well without being so cavalier all the time. Sometimes when a match has it done, they've conserved energy second half, they've played with great discipline, good organisation, and they've extended the lead and haven't conceded. And now they're almost uh, there matching the standards of Wimbledon. <laughs> Seven wins in a row. Halfway line. 
Beckham. Taken up from Philippe Albert for Newcastle United. Miscontrolled initially by Cantona. And uh, the Newcastle fans and some of the Newcastle players believe that Cantona was culpable after that. Remember, he's already been booked. And now he's... Uh, comprehensively taken out of the play and there was no free kick going to be given for that the ball's gone out for treatment for Peter Beardsley on whose behalf Alan Shearer was leading the calls for Cantona to be sent off well they're all in sense with Cantona no one had quite control of this ball both are sprinting towards it both jump in that right leg of Cantona is a bit wayward in my opinion too wayward to be going to the ball and I think that's what incensed the likes of Shearer and Ferdinand. It's about to straighten day for Eric Cantona and Co. Yes, perhaps it's the biggest test that he's had of his supposedly changed temperament. And certainly last year he kept everything brilliantly under control, got a lot of praise for that. And uh, the ball was put out. Newcastle, uh, on another occasion, might have expected to get the ball back. Manchester United want a goal back. Scores. That was Beresford in the nick of time for Newcastle. Well, everything Newcastle do is going to be met with rapturous applause from now on. Any tackle one, any throw-in one, any corner one. And a huge cheer from this crowd. This is Butt, gone a long way, Skulls coming in. And they've taken up a great position. Well, that's Cantona, a hit. And it hit Steve Watson, I suppose you could say he took up a great position as well. It hit him in the back of the head, I think, didn't it? <laughs> now, yeah, I'm your luck football, I'm a firm believer of that, Mark, and you. You work hard and you graft hard, you put it in. And sometimes you earn that little bit of luck and good fortune it swings big games as, like this. There's no doubt an awful lot hinged in that opening goal and there'll be much debate after the final whistle goes about it. But since then, well, you just have to admire, I think, what Newcastle have done, the way they've played, the way they've gone about this. McLaren, that's Beardsley. That's offside, coming up for you on Sky Sports from the respective Coca-Cola Cups in Scotland. Rangers still top of the uh, Premier Division. After Celtic only drew today, they play their semi-final against Dunfermline. That's on Tuesday, live on Sky Sports 1. Leeds United against Aston Villa, Sky Sports 3 from the Coca-Cola Cup in England on Wednesday. And don't forget, after that, Martin, coming up on Sky Sports, is Judgment Night, Saturday, November the 9th. A big fight extravaganza, including Holyfield against Tyson. I know I'll be tuned in, I hope you will. All the information will come up after this game. Well, the Newcastle fans will be saying this is judgment day here, but it's a bit early in the season for those sort of conclusions to be drawn. See what I mean? Every pass been greeted with. suggest they make this slight change. I've seen the times when Philippe Albert would have pulled that out of the air, tried to pick a pass out, tried to do something fancy. Didn't enter his head then, he got it down and hooked it back over his shoulder to safety. Right. Here's 
Gary Neville. And uh, the corner has been given again, the eagle-eyed assistant referee, but Cernicek refusing not to be beaten on his near post. Lovely running ball. Ginola if he'd have got the first touch in then. And no put it out. Ferris could have even switched the play. Oh, no, there's a lot of room on the right. It was never needed to pass with that ambition in truth. And Newcastle come towards the last 15 minutes. 3 0 in front. I'll mention that to the European Football of the Year honour that might come his way. Scholes, the last Englishman to uh, be voted for that prestigious position was a certain Kevin Keegan. Great position from Shearer. Beardsley. Oh, and it's another one now. Yes, Shearer, of course. The script is complete for Newcastle United. And it started and finished with that man there, Alan Shearer. He was available to receive the ball through. Held up by David May, but released a great cross-field pass to Beardsley. And they didn't hang about wide. He's thinking they might be a goal on here. Schmeichel performed the role. Not once. With this shot, look at the way Beardsley hits it round there with. But twice there, the Shearer went. It didn't take him long, it was mentioned he hadn't scored. Two minutes later, well, that's a put right. Same team, same score line. Different way around. <laughs> and of course, a different venue. We were <laughs> from the. Uh, I suppose the hostility of Turkey. Manchester United's thin home based hostility here at St James's Park. And Newcastle absolutely delighting the tsunami, but not only that, sending out their own message around the rest of the country. But when the big games come around, they can be more than a match for the best. They've certainly been the best today. For all the arguments over the way it got off on the Manchester United. And it's not over yet. Well, Ferdinand was trying to come across in front of May. And the ball passed in the end between May and Schmeichel. Nice little interplay. And this is a decent ball. Les Ferdinand hopes to go in in front of David May. That's the choices you have to make when you're playing up there, whether you hold the back post, whether you nick in in front. He opted to go in front of May. Good run, just the ball didn't quite reach him. Well, it's why uh, Andy Gray has given up predicting <laughs> the man of the match and allow you. Uh, <laughs> Much respected viewers to make the decision for him. I think it'll be a Newcastle play. 0891 double one double one zero one. What makes you say that? <laughs> so Shearer keeps his run going, of scoring in every home Premiership game since he joined his beloved Newcastle United. Cantona. Actually, pretty small beer after what five matches at last season with Blackburn. As I'm sure Kenny Dalglish would remind us he scored in every home league game until February. So uh, Newcastle, <laughs> I think, have got maybe a bit more to look forward to. Five. I mean, a lot to Cernicek to keep a clean sheet today. I think I mean I want the whole team. I was just thinking maybe now there's enough 
daylight between the two teams on the scoreline. But Kevin, just to say, you saw one or two players now, like Peter Beardy, Robert Lee, if you want to get forward and do so now, we're four nil up. And I just wonder if tempering that might be the fact that, hey, we'd like to keep a clean sheet as well. Yes, of course, they scored four goals the last time we were here yeah. against Aston Villa and they're really hanging on. That's better. There's another little example. John Beresford often I've seen Martin pushed up ahead in the centre-backs when balls come in from that side. This time he's got a classic position that you'd want your full-back to be. Skulls. Can't change the symmetry on the scoreline. These are the charity shield. defeat of Manchester United since the Premier League started, Martin. I mean, the centre back is now to keep a clean sheet. Beardsley. And a goal. That's a cold kick and Schmeichel is still shouting it. Referee Steve Dunn. <laughs> well, here we go, this is the ball. Look, he cuts inside. And that's a wonderful ball to do, isn't it? But it doesn't hang about there. That's an example of someone who wants to score goals. Because when it drops down, he's made up 30, 40 yards infield and gets himself a tap in. Leclerc. Skull's holding on the right. Found by Cantona. Price. Swallowed up by Sonny Cech again. Well, just one or two openings, but it, most of the headers, to be fair to Newcastle, have come from wide of the, the width of the goal. They've been about the far end of the six-yard ball. It's always a difficult header from there, never easy. Boborski had one, Cantona had one, and now Krauss had one. When you think it's 4 0, Martin, and Les Ferdinand will probably think, wait a minute, I could have had a hat trick. The diving header he missed, and then the chance before Shearer knocked in the rebound, he would probably think I should have scored. Here is Shearer, and the wording again. Ferdinand. Only Shearer has gone into the penalty area. Again, uh, the midfield, nicely shaped up for Kevin Keegan. The Pallister bringing it away. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Do you know who's been really in tune with the uh, special requirements of this game right from the start? It's David Batty! Oh, that deserved a goal. It deserved a goal for the genius on the near side of Gabby Ginola, who skipped past Gary Neville quite beautifully. And it deserved a goal for the wonderful awareness of Blaise Ferdinand with a lovely cushion header. And it deserved a goal for Batty's run. Look at this, watch him come into the picture. And he's only just out. Ginola. Beardsley. Well, it could be a fifth in the offing. On a day when Newcastle would have taken one now. Here they are, looking for number five. With Philippe Albert! Oh! Absolutely glorious! Well, if the rest was the kick, there is the icing. A quite majestic goal from Philippe Albert. No one pressurised him. We didn't need an invitation. Look at my Schmeichel down at the angle. What skill, what 
the never say die approach. That's his hallmark. But Manchester United being absolutely cut apart. Jordi Cruyff. Five goals, five different scorers. You have to really pinch yourself to believe that it's happened. Hey, you don't have to pinch anyone in this ground that's watching it. All these Newcastle supporters know what's happening. The ones who are stunned are in the far corner. The Manchester United supporters. Are you telling me the Newcastle fans expected a 5 They didn't expect it. <laughs> they dreamt it, Martin, they dreamt it. Where the hands up, five. Look. It's the highest of high fives. And the ones who aren't showing anything up there, that's where the Manchester United fans are. They can't believe this is happening. As we said right at the beginning, it's never going to win you the championship today. But it's a day they'll not forget here for quite some time. Well, they'll feel it's a shame you only get three points for it. been content to do his part defensively. Suddenly got back to uh, the Cavalier ways and yet when defending was required he was there. And again. Ginola. He struck the second which you would have thought would have been the cream of the crop, but Albert would argue with that. Well, they haven't lost five many times, Mark Manchester United, but I have to say that I did play in a game at Goodison in 84, when Everton beat Manchester United 5-1, I think it was, on the day. A 5-0 on the day, so I think that hasn't happened too often. Four minutes to go. Could it even be six? <laughs> then we would be testing our statisticians. <laughs> I think they uh, have been affected by the rain as well. <laughs> the goals that have rained into Schmeichel's net. said at Wembley, what would it mean to Newcastle? And it took them uh, a couple of weeks to get it out of their system. We must say now, what will this mean to Manchester United? This is a hammering. Beresford. Shearer. Beresford. Manchester United have punched right now. He's trying to make a double change. Warren Barton, who's been out of the first team frame in the Premiership for a good while now, comes on to Steve Watson, who's been keeping out him out at right back. And Lee Clark gets a taste of this wonderful day for Newcastle, for Rob Lee, who's played a major part, as everyone has done, and Kevin Keegan, first to acknowledge that. In uh, most instances, the finishing has been of a very high order, but almost as much as the goals, Andy, the uh, general shape of Newcastle's play is a memory to take away from this extraordinary episode on Tyneside. I would suggest that this is a video that's kept very much up at Newcastle's training ground, Martin. And if Kevin Keegan needs to make a point to any of his players who might think, well, we've forgotten what's required to win these sort of games, to, to sit them down and show them it and say, listen, lads, this is how you do it. This is the kind of shape you have. And the one thing that they've done, that maybe I said they didn't do against the likes of Villa when we were here last, was control the game when they were ahead. They actually controlled the game when they were ahead, and that's been the difference today. Goals. Uh, it was 
a noble drive from Jordi Cruyff. Comes useful in the air. fans as they shout the team towards the final whistle just need to butt in to give you that phone number again 0891 111101 the number the Newcastle fans will be shouting for a long time is 50 that's unless it becomes 60 in the Stoppage time that remains. I think you should just give them the champagne and stick it in the dressing room. I think that's the best way. I tell you what, it's hard to fix someone in a black and white shirt who hasn't done his job. Yes. Alan Shearer will share the acclaim with all the others in black and white. And there hasn't even been a Merseyside derby to. Uh, Share the spotlight today because of the weather. It's all eyes on Newcastle and all eyes on Newcastle United. Homage being paid by uh, an interloper in truth to King Kevin. Think we better ask for an overrun for Kevin's after match interview. <laughs> Might go on for a while. And we've got all the team to uh, talk to as well. And the goals. Brooks can't complain. Angry on Manchester United's behalf. It's frustration, isn't it? Barton's cross. It's another five against Manchester United today, five yellow cards. What a day to remember from Newcastle United. Manchester United's biggest defeat for 12 years, the last unbeaten record in this season's Premiership well and truly ended. Newcastle's first ever Premiership win over the club, which ruined their championship ambitions last season. And to top it off, of course, it takes them emphatically back to the top of the league. Philippe Albert with the most apt finale They've beaten Peter Schmeichel every which way today. A goalkeeper who's been impassable in matches recently against Newcastle. But five times, controversially with Peacock, brilliantly by Ginola. Ferdinand chipped in. Shearer was there, of course, to make a mark on the scoreline. Huge jubilation at St James's. They'll feel that all scores have been settled here, but I suppose that will only truly be the case with silverware at the expense of Manchester United at the end of the season. You can bet your life, that's the truth, Martin. 5 0 will be long forgotten if once again it's Manchester United 1, it's Newcastle 2 at the end of the season. Well, Newcastle fans were in despair last May, and indeed after the charity shield 10 weeks ago, but for now, this will do very nicely indeed. Newcastle United 5, Manchester United 0.